everybody and uh, welcome to today's video in which we will create the materials needed for our Edison light bulb that we've modeled in the previous video so if you haven't watched that one make sure you check it out so you can see how we're gonna end up with something like this so if you follow that video this is what uh, your model is gonna look like now originally I did not even think about making this video but ever since I released the original video where uh, I did the modeling I've had quite a few people actually ask me to make a tutorial on how I would uh, model this or not model but how I would make the materials for it so let's go ahead and actually try uh, go and show that thing in in this video when creating the materials for this light bulb, what I'm gonna first do is separate this into individual elements. In this case, for this light bulb, what we have here is the top of this uh, light bulb, which is metal. We have this inner piece here, which is glass, and the outer edge is glass. We have uh, these two holders here that are uh, supposed to be something like copper. So again, another metal and this inner piece which is uh, the actual uh, light wire or the light producing wire so let's go ahead and uh, show you how we can create these materials i'm going to start off with the simplest one which is going to be the uh, the metal so let's go and call this metal and apply it to our top there now I'm going to open up my settings so by pressing F10. In my V-Ray, I have a progressive setup. Uh, my render time is zero. In my GI, I have both a setup and brute force. And I'm actually even going to remove my denoiser here. So the reason for doing this is so now when I open up uh, the rendering here, I can use my uh, interactive rendering which means whatever I do here, I'm uh, going to see the change being done in real time, which can really help you when you're uh, creating your materials. So let's open up the material again. All right, now let's start this thing. And first thing that I want to do is knowing that this is a metal. Uh, let's take a look at this image here. The way that you're gonna you you can define what you're gonna use for diffuse in a metal is you're gonna look to a point where you have uh, the metal reflecting on itself. In this case, it's this piece over here. So as you can see, it's rather dark. It's very very dark. Actually, here I'm, I can see that it's actually black. So let's go ahead and give it a black. I'm gonna just not gonna go to all the way to uh, zero. Let's just give it something like let's try a very very low value like three. There you go. All right, so three and this side I can see that it, it updates right away. So what I want to do next is I want to increase the reflectivity. If I take a look again at my image, I'm gonna notice that this is rather reflective. So let's add in the reflection, something like two. 38 or something like that click OK all right awesome now next thing that I want to do is when I'm looking at this reflection I can see that this thing is actually uh, blurred so that blur is going to be controlled by the glossiness so get this thing to 0 0.8 and let's see how that thing looks all right it's not bad let's try it with 0 0.7 even all right, so I'm starting to slowly get there. But now, if I take a look at here, I can actually see that I have some color coming into this. So the way that I can get some color into the reflection is instead of uh, messing around with the diffuse, I'm going to take the reflection, put it up here somewhere, and choose the coloring that I want to have. In this case, let's try and match it with uh, something that I have here now the problem is that now uh, I'm trying to show you guys how to match this but usually when I do this I put it on the other screen so I can see it right away because in this case once I click here the image is hidden so that's a bit of a problem for me so I'm gonna put it to the side and try to match it as closely as possible from here so something like very bright color 
All right, we're going to start something like this as a starting point. Now, next thing that I want to do is I want to break up the reflection a bit. If you take a look at here, you're going to notice that these are not straight uh, lights like you can see here, but instead they're kind of broken up. We can get this uh, effect by using uh, sort of a dirt map. So I have uh, some uh, dirt maps here. As you can see, they're basically black and white with a lot of smudges. So different look. Let's try with, let's, I'm going to try with the number three that I have here. And what I'm going to do is go, go into the maps, drag it into the reflection glossiness here. And this is going to give me that look. As you, as you can see, when I zoom in now a bit, I can see that I have those splotchy places. So it's not uniform all the way. Now, another thing that I want to do here is knowing that this is actually a uh, metal. My Fresnel reflections are locked at 1.6. Now, the Fresnel uh, reflections are going to control the angle at which this metal is going to start to uh, reflect things. So I'm going to unlock it by pressing on the L. And now I can increase this. So let's try with a double amount. So this is 1.6. Let's go with 3.2 and see the difference. Right away, you can see now that uh, I get a lot more light being reflected off of this. And now if you compare it with uh, this place here, you're gonna see that it's starting to look a bit better. So let's go even higher, let's go 6.4. And now you can see that I'm getting even more light reflecting. Let's try 12. There we go, so now this thing is reflecting a lot more of um, well, uh, at a, it's reflecting light at a bigger angle. So I don't think it's, I have to go to up to a 12. So let's try with an eight. I think this is going to be close enough for what I want, which is OK here. There we go. Awesome. All right. So we have the metal. So let's continue on with uh, the rest of the uh, materials. The next big material is going to be the actual glass material. So this is going to uh, consist of the majority of this model. So let's select the outer uh, shell for this glass and call this glass material. All right, awesome. Apply it to our shell like so. And now here's the thing. Glass has a diffuse which kind of is defined again similar to like what you would see in the metals so what you want to see is a place where the glass kind of folds on its own so as you can see in this case the glass has a very dark diffuse it's almost brown so a very uh, dark brown but we will see how we can control that further away so for now i'm actually going to go ahead and give it a um, a black color so it doesn't really matter so reflection, glass has a lot of it. So I'm going to go with 245 or something like it. Honestly, the value is really not that important. You can even play around here. I just, for my uh, own uh, experience, I shy away from using the 255 because I've had problems with that. So I kind of try to use around 250 for something when it's very shiny. Then I'm going to go to the refraction. And for the refraction, again, very refractive. So let's go with 250 again and click OK. By just doing this, what you're going to notice is that I have here something looking like a very uh, resembling a gla uh, something very closely resembling glass. Another thing that I would like to add is when I'm actually here to reflect, I can increase the maximum depth. And this is the amount of uh, times the rays uh, of light when they come into, uh, into touch with this uh, material, they're going to bounce around. So I'm going to increase the number of max depth. So I'm going to try to something to seven. I'm going to do the same thing for the IOR as well. All right, great. So this is how you would create the most basic uh, see-through glass. But if we take a look at this image here, what you're going to notice is that even though this is a see-through glass, it has some color. 
Now adding in the color for the glass is controlled by the fog color here. So by pressing the fog color, we can choose what sort of color we would like to add into our glass. We can slowly start to add in that uh, tint and you can notice that right away we can see it in here. So that's nice. Increase the OK. Let me try to increase the reflection IOR to like 3. Yeah, see, this is really going to emphasize those reflections. So let's go with IOR 3 here as well. All right, so this is for a much shinier look. Now, I think that for uh, glass, at least it was 2.4. 2.4. There we go, like that. So now I want to add in a bit more color. Again, increase the coloring here. And I'm actually happy with how this thing is starting to shape up. It's coming very close to what we want it to be. Go OK. Now in the diffuse, I want to have a color like this. There we go. And that color is going to, con uh, the diffuse is actually going to control the rim uh, lights or the all of those uh, little uh, vert not vertices, but uh, pixels that are on the rim of this uh, model. So go OK, like this. And now, next thing that I want to do is I want to add in that uh, this uh, material to this inner piece here as well. So what I'm going to do is click and drag it here and call this glass. Well, let's just name it painted or colored. Apply it to it. And right away, you can see that in here, it's a much, much uh, harder color. So we're going to have to do a bit of compensation for it. Because if you take a look at here, it is quite a see-through uh, model or uh, quite a see-through material, but it has that tint on the edges. So what I'm going to do is increase the bias here. And that should make the fog go near the edges more. So let's try with something like 10. All right, I can see something happening. Let's try 30. Even higher by going 50. 150 maybe. Yeah, this is not bad. So I can actually see that the bias can push it just so far. Now, next thing that I want to do is have a little less uh, coloring going inside that thing so I can decrease the fog multiplier. So go something like 0 0.5. And there we go. I actually have something that I like how it looks like. There we go. It's very similar to what I'm seeing on this side. Now, next thing that we want to do would be to create a material that is going to control how our metal is going to, or the metal hangers are going to look like. So for that, I'm simply going to copy the metal, apply it to those let's just call it metal copper apply it to our selection here to all our holders now since this is uh, very similar to copper we just need to have a bit more reddish in there click OK and this should really help us drive that look for a copper uh, holder now, another thing that I just noticed is that when you're creating your glass, like here, well, what you can do is uh, you add in a UVW map, uh, put a, a cylindrical uh, mapping, because we don't have to unwrap this thing, as we're going to only see it from uh, one place. What I can do to break up this per uh, perfect reflection, because if I look at my image here, I can see that I have some irregularities in my reflections something like here so what i can do is either go and put a noise bump on a very very small amount so something like this put a very very small amount in the bump as a noise map let's take this a 
on a very small scale, 0 0.1. That one is gonna work. So in the noise, the size should be a lot smaller. Let's try with one. All right, I think even one is too much. So let's go 0 0.3. And you can see that once we do this, we have this uh, look of wavering about in our reflection. So this is actually looking nice so far, because this is what you would get when you uh, actually work the glass and you're blowing up the glass. You're gonna get that wavery look in the reflection. So I'm actually happy with how this thing looks like so far. So the only thing that I have left is to create the material for our actual light wire in, um, inside over here. So let's create that thing as well. For that thing, I'm actually gonna stop this thing uh, for the moment. I'm going to open up uh, Alt-Q and I'm going to isolate this thing so you can see it. Let me just put this thing to the side. Now. As you can see, when we created this, we created it out of a spline. In my case, the spline is still open, so I haven't collapsed it yet. The thing that is a very good thing to have when you're working with splines is you can go inside the rendering and you can tack in this uh, generate mapping coordinates. This is going to mean that this entire uh, spline here is going to be unwrapped. And it's going to be treated like it's an actual cylinder that is basically wavered around, which is exactly what we want for our case. So I'm going to enter my isolate, put this thing back to here. And now here is what I want to do. What I want to do is uh, make this thing emit light. But the, the trick here is not just to make it so it's a glowy uh, light, but instead, if you take a look at the Edison bulbs, I've actually managed to find an image in which you're gonna notice that this thing looks more like one of those hoses that has LED uh, lights inside. So it's not just one big uh, endless uh, light wire, but instead it's more like a broken up light sources. So let's try and emulate this. The way to do it, or the easiest way to emulate this would be to go ahead i'm actually gonna go in and isolate this one more time and call this light wire and assign material to selection great now what i want to do here is in my diffuse i want to put a, a gradient uh, ramp map like this and put a uh, show shaded material in viewport. As I press this, I'm really not gonna see anything in here because at the moment I need to go and rotate this thing around for 90 degrees. So now what I'm seeing is I have this black to white. That's okay, but in this case, I want to have both of these to black. So the endings should be at black and increase the U tiling here. So I'm gonna go and increase this to, let's try it, 50. All right, let's try it a lot higher, let's go 500. Okay, awesome. I'm getting something like this. So if we compare it to this piece, we're gonna notice that we have this middle piece, which is supposed to be the light. And you have the dimming, and then it starts lighting up again. All right, so if, we know this, then what we can do is I can double click on this uh, center point and here choose the color of the light that I want to have. So let's go with something like very light like this, a bit more to the reddish like so. All right, great. Now I'm going to add one here and one here copy this uh, value, put it there, paste and paste. Take the middle one and push it more to the white. The reason for doing this is that as I'm looking at this image, I can see that this one is very, very bright. 
So what I want to do is uh, copy this thing, paste it to the ends, like so. But this time around, make this thing a bit darker. Copy it from here, paste it here. So we have one transition that is not easily going to be seen. So I can control with this how big that light bulb is going to be or that light spot is going to be like that. All right, awesome. So now let's test this thing out when I put it on uh, interactive rendering. What you notice is I have this thing looking so like that. It's not bad, but here's the thing though. Here we only have it as a, a normal uh, uh, V-Ray material. What I want to do is I'm going to take another material. Again, select this thing. Assign the material to selection and convert this from a V-Ray material to a V-Ray light material. So V-Ray light material. There we go, like so. And right away, you can see that this thing just became a very, very bright uh, strip. Now, what I want to do is go back here, copy my, copy the map that we just created, the gradient ramp, and dump it in here. So paste a copy. All right, awesome. Now, if you take a look at here, what you're going to notice is that I have uh, that look that we had in our bulb as in here. So let me just go and select a smaller region so we can see it better. And just so it's faster for me to work on this thing while uh, I'm recording this, I'm going to go into the, the glass and decrease the bump or actually turn off the bump all the way because it's really hogging up some rendering time there we go all right much better much faster results so again back to our very light material what i can do here is click on compensate camera exposure that is going to decrease the glow and now we can further control this glow by increasing the number here with the multiplier so let's try about three or five or six or nine. Now, see, nine is now beginning to be like the original one it was. So I'm going to try with five. And if I want to change any of the color for this thing, what I'm going to do is I can go inside the gradient ramp. And in here, change these. So if I want to get this thing to be more uh, like so, I can increase the light. If I need to change the color for this, if I'm not happy with how it looks like, I can give it a more of a bluish uh, burnout area like so. And basically, you can do whatever you want with this thing. In case you don't want to have this, all you can do is go back in here, clean the gradient ramp. So clear it up, it's gonna be left as a white stripe. And then you can control the white uh, stripe color with uh, just a selector, something like this. Turn on the options. Well, actually there's no need for uh, backside or the opacity because we are not using an opacity for this thing. And turn on the uh, direct illumination. And this is more or less what you're left with. You have your entire uh, light bulb being rendered. You have uh, reflections for the glass and you have everything. For me, pers personally, I prefer to have this uh, thing copied here because I think it looks uh, a bit better a bit more realistic at least if I'm going for a look like this one there we go if you prefer to have it the other way uh, feel free and do it that way 
So more or less that would cover up all of the material creations for this uh, light bulb. I hope you guys had fun and you managed to learn something new. If you do have any questions, leave them below. I will do my best to meet you in the comment section of the video. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button. And if you're not subscribed, now is a great time to do so. As always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.